And welcome to my podcast, I Do What I Want by Hollis Joe McCollum, or just Hollis, I'm tired of saying my full name. Uh, so I am Hollis, I am an author of To Save a World, the upcoming book To uh, Spare the Swallow, and many more on its way, but I'm so excited because, as you can see in this podcast, I finally have a wonderful guest, Oksana Mauricio. And who was my wonderful friend from, well, she lives in California presently, but she has been all over the world. She is such an enlightening and enriching individual. And today we're going to talk about writing. Hi, Oksana. How are you? <laughs> Good. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you guys today from joining from Los Angeles, California. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Oksana is not just a writer. She is such a creative person, but she also sings. And do you write music as well? Yes, a little bit of that, yeah. Yeah. And and she just she's always she's always got some wonderful project going on that I love to hear about. And it's it's fine. She and I have already been talking for like two hours. <laughs> so so we've we've already had a conversation going. But then we decided, oh right, we were supposed to record a podcast. <laughs> So I have her on today to talk a little bit more. I talk about my writing journey a lot on this podcast, uh, but this is nice because now we have a different perspective. Every writer has a different journey, has a different experience. And that's a really important thing to understand as, as a writer trying to find their way in the world is that we're all different and that's okay. And you can learn from other people's experiences, but you still have to understand that yours will not be the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Oksana is actually in the middle of writing um, a, a book right now, which is very exciting. So, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your current project? <clears throat> so yeah, this novel actually um, is called Abba's World. And I've been working for it for, for a couple of months now. I actually took a break in this summer, I think it was like around June where, you know, people talk about the writer's block. I don't think it was the writer's block. I just think I didn't have anything else to write. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, but I really feel like I was chatting with uh, Hollis already about that too. And I really feel like, yeah, so it, it's the, I started writing since 2020, no, 2019 or, Actually, let's go back. I've been writing, trying to write my book since 2017 for a while, mm -hmm. like my story, like my memoir, and I've been doing that. But thankfully for the painful journey that I had of writing my own story, it gave me the beautiful gift of this exciting novel that I love to share with the world someday. But there's still more work that we need to do and crafting and juicing it out. And um, yeah, it's exciting. So it's just, um, it's mainly the African world. I'm trying to create this world with the little girl, her experiences of traveling and dreams and desires and family traditions, cultures with the African world and uh, beautiful, wonderful food, the music, mm -hmm. just the world around Africa and what it looks like, what it sounds like, you know, what, you know, things that people perhaps don't know about, even if you travel there, you never live there, but I'm actually trying to bring you to that world and smell and feel that world and, and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that. And African food is so delicious for, for people who have not tried it. Uh, I, I know Ethiopian is definitely one of the most popular African foods in the U.S., but like I've had Kenyan food. I've had, I've had, it's delicious. It's so flavorful. Yeah. And, and it's like people, particularly in the States, maybe not so much in other countries, but they don't realize what they're missing. <laughs> if they don't, if they don't enjoy that. And food is such a huge part of culture. And, mm -hmm. and I love, I love that. And I love to, I love to see that because, you know, just sharing culture is in itself is a beautiful thing. Uh, you don't have to, you don't have to live some, that, that's one of the wonderful things about books is mm -hmm. you don't have to live anywhere in particular, I've even visited anywhere to experience a place and a people, because you can you can transport yourself there through through the author's eyes, and that's why we love being writers. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell us uh, a little bit about the inspiration behind behind Abba's world and and who who is without without spoiling, of course, because. Um, because we don't, we don't, we want to make sure that we we read your book. But like, who is Abba? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so Abba, she's this. Uh, there's different scenes mm -hmm. uh, 
we have her as a little girl like she's this little girl that really grew up in this world it's a beautiful world with beautiful things surrounded by you know it's gonna be actually the world is actually where i was born in luanda angola oh, in africa yeah. so there's her experiences around the beautiful fruits cultivated in the ground mangoes tamarinds all the roots of the land all the beautiful things that america doesn't know about preservation and roots and things that she enjoys as a little girl her relationship with her mom and her family who are very mom is very traditional as a doctor the father uh being a very creative man and politician so just really like the relationships that she has that is so rich and so whole and then to the transition that she makes later on in her life becoming an adult and cultures obligations of you know just a lot of things that people don't know about the culture of par the parents the african parents are very um uh how can i say notorious for like you're going to be a doctor <laughs> they create uh you know like this is who you're going to be and they really they really value education because they see this perfect world that you're going to be and you're going to be the one who's going to make it in the world and is going to they see it, the world a very um it's different from us because it's not individualism it's very communal very community central so it's like yeah. if one makes in a community we all going to be better we all going to make it we all going to you know be better humans you know and obviously if one person makes it then everybody you know but there's this controversy about dreaming and uh, the reality of having dreams that is not so acceptive in that culture or being creative not so acceptive in that culture but mainly creating this cookie cutter dream uh, lifestyle like you're going to be a doctor or you have to marry this amazing man and this is we want to make sure you're taking care of it you know so there's these yeah. two realities of African cultures where it's created for you. They they want the best to make sure you provide it for you, have kids, you have babies. But then there's also, you know, the reality of a choice, which is not offered, but then she has to fight to try to create that for herself. Oh, wow. I love that. <laughs> that yeah, honestly, that's, that's, and it sounds like even though it's a very uniquely cultural experience, it also sounds like a highly relatable experience on an emotional level for, mm -hmm. for readers. Because even if you've never, experienced particularly what we can all relate to the struggle of the, the basic struggle of our parents wanting one thing for us and us needing another thing for ourselves and and whether or not you're given that support because they because even if your parents want you to do something but you choose to go another path if they support you that's a whole different experience as mm -hmm. they don't explain and it's it's really that's really cool. Mm. I like that. I, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to read it. I already got, <laughs> I, I, I get to read it already. I'm very excited about that. So. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm into, and so do, do we start out with her being young, like, I mean, obviously a little girl, but is she like six years old or uh, that really young childhood perspective or, or yeah, we... it will be between the age, between six to nine years old, like, you know, that kind of in a sense, you know, and the how she view the world around her because it's called Eva's world. But then, so you see, it can transform throughout the book, but really how she view the world around her and the most important beings in her life, you know, her parents, you know, because she's rooted in tradition, tradition and culture and family is huge, huge in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, the backbone is family, like you don't do anything with, with without family. So it's everything, you know, to the culture. And I think just kind of bringing that, like being raised, you know, growing up around her grandma and, you know, her grandma being the person who kind of is more of the, the mom is more the tradition, traditionalist and she's very like, you know, like you got, you got to follow this path. The dad it's kind of like more tender and gentle, you know, even the though creative he's one, yeah. it's like, even though more he's serious also, but mm -hmm. the more tender, like he could be strong in front of the mom, but then she can kind of, kind of be a softer one. And then <laughs> the, the grandma can be the one who's more, um, kind of provides the unconditional love that you, oh. and, and brings that kind of like, uh, I don't want to say blender or brings that balance or equilibrium between the two, mm. but she's really just grandma and she really just just loves you know yeah that that brings to mind the old uh cliche of it takes a village and you know to, to raise a child and i kind of love that because you referenced before that and, and you're absolutely right in american culture we're so individualistic that, that just cultural mindset is and then 
otherworldly cultures, African and Asian, and you know, of particular reference, are very focused on the overall harmony of of everyone and everyone, you know. And I feel like that's where the "it takes a village" uh, saying comes from. But it's reminding me of that. You know, everyone is uh, the the grandmother and the father and the mother are all balancing each other because the mother sounds like the practical one you know she's like no you you need to be able to provide for yourself so be a doctor or whatever you know whatever <laughs> it is and and the and the dad is is saying you know oh well uh, you know paint on the side honey but but still be a doctor you know but but also you know follow your follow your creative dreams and your hobbies or maybe something like that and then and then maybe and then grandma's the one who's like just follow your heart and and that and the thing is the the child needs all three Mm-hmm. because you have to learn responsibility along with that dream and mm-hmm. and I really I really love that and I feel that people frankly a lot of people probably need it you know even if even if they didn't receive it in their own childhood and they can they can uh vicariously mm-hmm. get it through a story like this yeah <laughs> <laughs> And, and so the, and, and is it placed in the modern, like in, in present day world, or is it placed maybe back in time at all or anything? So like it that? started, I, I started doing it uh, mm-hmm. to be uh, in 1990. So even the, the food, what she's wearing in that time is relevant to 1990s, mm-hmm. you know, but then it evolves. So that's when it started, but it evolves to modern culture of today. As she's evolving to be a young teenager and obviously traveling different cultures, mm-hmm. Europe and so forth, it evolves to be where we're at today. Wonderful. Well, and that's because, I mean, honestly, the world of 1990 is so vastly different from 2022. Yeah. And it's, it's a little boggling. <laughs> but at least I'm boggled by it when yeah. I think about just just communication in general. I, I mean, 1992 is when the internet hit. Like mm-hmm. 1990, we didn't even have the internet. Home computers weren't really a thing. Like if you had a home computer, you were really rich back <laughs> then. Like super rich, and you had to have an an entire purpose just to have the computer. You're probably a amazing scientist or something. But mm-hmm. but then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we we go from the different two extremes from 1990s, maybe cassettes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're talking about like, Winding it with a pencil. Cassette, (laughs) you know, cassette, all of that stuff, you know. Some people did have what you call this man, you know, some people Mm -hmm. don't know what that is. Yeah, that was uh, Walkmans. I love my Walkmans. Walkmans, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Some people, you know, didn't, couldn't afford that. They didn't know what that was. They're just cassette players and stuff. Or Mm -hmm. we go from that to like, being in this modern culture where people have iPads, uh, what is it that they used to call it? It was another one um, before uh, iPhones. Oh, uh, the um, for the music only. Yeah, is the the um, ear, is that iPod. earpods or those? Okay, iPod. I think. Yeah, the yeah. little. Actually, I might. I, you know what? I think on this desk, <laughs> I have. I do. I found it the other day. I found my iPod from like fifteen years ago. Okay. that my parents that my parents gave me and i was like this this little thing this wow. my little ipod shuffle that would like wait where is it it would clip on it clips onto your shirt this would probably still work if i charged it i'm sure it does yeah <laughs> so you know going from that from having cassettes player mm-hmm. to you know the world of television and the world of earbuds you know and people were in that and, and iphones you know so that's very different yeah yeah well and i think yeah the first smartphone came out i want to say 2007 i'm saying this off the top of my head but i want to say 2007 is when the first smartphone where where you actually had like internet on your phone and and all of that that it is it's just an entirely different world and the way that even the way that you and i grew up our perceptions have had to change so vastly in the time of our, you know, childhood versus like we used to nowadays parents will text their children when it's time to come home. And, and back at, back when I was Uber drivers. Yeah. Or you, yeah. Oh my God, something or, but net, but when we were kids, like we had to see when mom turned on the porch light 
you know, or, or, or we just had a time we had to wear a watch and be home by whatever time dinner was, you know, it was like, you have to be home by five 30. Otherwise you're in trouble. And that's, that's your yeah. responsibility. Full stop. My parents would, <laughs> would come in Africa. They would, we would play until dark. So they, mm. we wouldn't know. We just kept playing. They would come and yell. I mean, scream at me. It's time to go inside. That's <laughs> what I knew. <laughs> See the old, they would just call you. <laughs> exactly. Oksana. Oh my yeah. Cre so yelling across the hills. Oksana. Get yeah. out of here. Are you in a tree? Mm -hmm. Get down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. And they, and they didn't, you know, but now parents, God, parents can microchip their children if they want to. It's, it's a little, it's a little insane. It's, it's a little like the future is now we live in a sci-fi movie in a lot of ways. I know. Oh my God. But I, it'll be, it's so interesting that, that the character will, will see those changes though, because she starts in 1990 and then, mm -hmm. and then, yeah. And, and then sees that huge technological vault into into all of this because the way that we have progressed in the last 30 years is just leaps and bounds and like light speed as compared to a crawl mm -hmm. you know that we do we're doing for thousands of years previous if you're going to talk about like time in between yeah uh, yeah it's anyway that's a whole other discussion <laughs> <laughs> you and i are very bad about veering off into other <laughs> topics um <laughs> so uh yeah so what just going back into your writing and, and everything and and as a writer how do you how do you do it like what is, what is your particular feeling about it why did you choose to why did you choose to undertake this this such such an emotional experience because it is it's a highly emotional uh generous experience to because you're giving you're you're taking a big part of yourself and giving it to the world <laughs> oh as far as um, the writing are we talking about the book just the writing well both i mean the right writing, writing okay. in general is to me in a lot of ways it's it's it's, it's making yourself very vulnerable to millions of strangers mm -hmm. and ultimately what writers are trying to do at least in my personal assessment is like we are trying to take a piece of ourselves and share it and mm -hmm. hopefully people can learn from whatever experience we have we have like g given out from from our hearts and mm -hmm. um even like well you know i write i write fantasy so but but i still you know the characters are going through real experiences in a sense of their their emotional journeys and all of that and, and uh yeah so so uh so it is generous in a positive if we're going to take an optimistic positive spin <laughs> we're, we're so generous <laughs> but um but yeah so what what made you want to to do that well i feel like my journey my relationship with writing has been is so succinct with who who i was as a child as far as like reading a lot and writing in journals mm -hmm. that i didn't even realize that writing was the thing you know there's a lot of people out there that like they're looking for the thing that fulfills them. They just don't know it's already there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't know writing was the thing until I think just in my journey here in LA, before I moved to LA, like to uh, 20, uh, I moved to LA to 2017. And um, that's when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I, I was so intrigued. And I was like, I'm gonna start a blog. That's when I began to write about my story different than writing in journals, which is a different. And then I, I started writing a blog for like two, three years. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I begin to just share my story there, kind of warm up without knowing. And then uh, attempt to like writing my books just in journals and stuff. But I really feel like I was just literally writing what, my stories, you know, and, and stuff like that. But I feel like it wasn't until 2020, 2019, I was still uh, doing a lot of things illustrative with art and different mm -hmm. things. But I know 20, it wasn't until 2020 that I began to really end up on that journey of writing them more. And being around other writers, and I think there was the enlightenment, being around other writers, poets, mm -hmm. poetry, which poetry really helped me find my voice, um, helped me. Poetry, the challenges of writing a memoir was very difficult because um, writing those hard emotions was very tough, but poetry just helped me turn into, make it colorful with the expressions and, you know, sour lime or whatever you know like the fragrances and different things you know so i was able to kind of express my voice find my style and all of that and poetry 
but then through those experiences that's when i'm taking so many writing classes too like in 2020 i took a lot of yeah a lot of writing classes on zooms with other poets with other writers and you know i think it was very helpful to me to identify that this is a gift and let's perfect the skill you know this is beyond writing in journals is very different than you trying to write a book are very different than you trying to write poetry there's a mm -hmm. different narratives and i think i realized uh, one of the particular writing classes that i took where we're talking about more of how to perfect the skill and um yeah and i feel like being in different communities does help me really uh have the accountability to be able to continue to write and perfect the skill and get feedback and um yeah and i think poetry is another format too that helps to to, you know, just obviously to help you with your emotions, you know, like, mm -hmm. like for me, one of the things about writing, I realized that in this season anyways, um, when I'm, when I have something personally that I'm going through and I've journaled about it, I've talked about it, I meditate, I prayed, I did everything and nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just sitting and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to write a poem about this. There and you go. <laughs> once I write a poem about it, believe it or not, it settles. I will never talk about it again. I love you know, that. Oh, you know, yeah. You're out. It, it's out. It, it's, yeah, it's therapy. It's, yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. It is therapy. And I feel like, you know, and again, therapy is different for everybody. And to me, that's what it is. Because I guess you were asking, I was trying to figure out how to answer the question. But that's really what it is. Uh, writing for me, it is therapy because I've talked to other people about different forms of therapy. And I asked them, like, what do you think about the arts? Because you can't have therapy without the arts because that is part of therapy. And writing for me has been that. Oh, um, it has been, if I'm going through something or I just, my emotions, I always write because that's, I've been doing that since I was like 10 years old. My mom is the first one who gave me my first journal. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I know. That's so sweet. <laughs> and that, well, and you and I both have special feelings for moms and, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely a heartwarming word. And, and that's so wonderful because she saw that in you and she just, you know, she knew her daughter and she said, she's going to need this and mm -hmm. she gave it to you. <laughs> And that, yeah, and so, so you're, so what inspires you? I, I know, I know you and I um, talk a lot, like we both, we both love nature and we both mm -hmm. go out and we, like my, my particular form of meditation is to take a walk mm -hmm. in nature uh, and everything, but what, and uh, it, it, sometimes the ideas come to me on walks and sometimes it just gives me peace, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, so what, what, uh, what sort of things as a writer do you find inspiring? I know it can, keeping in mind, you know, it can be completely random. Sometimes you can look at a chalk drawing on the street that some random child did and you're like, you know what? I see a world map there or whatever you're doing. <laughs> For me, to be honest, I realized that uh, the common denominator this season has been stories, you know, mm -hmm. conversations. Like every time I have a conversation with Hollis, I'm inspired. We had a conversation two hours before this. I was inspired, I wrote some things down. It was gonna fit food for thought to me to go back into my novel. But I realized conversations are definitely inspirational, not just about anything that is draining or sucking, energy drives, no, 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 no. Conversation about writing, about life, about different things that make me think differently, challenging my thinking. But just on a general, I think, uh, I can be inspired, to be honest, just by being nurtured too. If I'm nurtured, if I'm well, if I'm healthy, that will help me bring my inspiration out. In nature, um, another thing is exploring, exploring with new things, with new creativity. Mm -hmm. um, like I was telling her about how I start playing basketball again. You know, I haven't done that in years and that just makes me feel good. And then I start playing the guitar again. You know, I bought a new guitar, you know, and um, <laughs> I know, like, it just the inspiration doesn't have to be with the novel. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, inspiration strikes with writing music also. And I'm, then I can write a melody or a new song in the middle of the night. Uh, last year, you can find out more information, like, if you go to YouTube, uh, on YouTube, on Instagram and stuff. And, mm -hmm. but yeah, me writing a new song, you know, um, and went to the studio and recorded that song. And just like, you know, inspiration might strike in different ways, you know, and it's okay. And that, and that's, it's wonderful and you know and the relationship is symbiotic for, for you I, I honestly Oksana inspires me a lot too and she's so she's such a wonderful cheerleader as well I can't tell you how many times I'll uh, there was this was actually a couple weeks ago and I don't know if I if I shared that with you or not but you um I was just kind of in the drudges of being super busy you know mm -hmm. you you know me I, I'm always like five different things all at once and um and then 
she just texted me and she was like, hey, I just, I just wanted to, to say hi. I wanted to give you some positivity. I wanted to say, I hope you're doing great. And, and honestly, she just, all she did was just like, she was just giving me motivation. And it was so lovely. And thank you so much for that because I needed it. And it gave me enough pause and like the spiral of busyness that I was in that I was like, whoa, thank you. Cause that's, and, and now I, well, I, and I shared with her in our, our conversation, I, I finished my manuscript, uh, the, the latest manuscript, woo! And, and, that, and I've, already, I've already started another one. <laughs> and uh, today I wrote the outline for it and, uh, and, and all of that, but it's, uh, you know, having, having friends and, you know, uh, people who your, your little, your little, you know, extended family of people who, who are just willing to or feel feel without without knowing what's going on. Just say, like, I, I feel like they need a little happy text. I'm just gonna give you some motivation, and that's so wonderful. So, yeah, it's definitely symbiotic. You help inspire me too, and you keep you keep me grounded. You you help to keep me from um, from going off into my my erratic like, what should I do? You know, like keep me on project <laughs> as, opposed, <laughs> as opposed to bringing up new ones. <laughs> and, and that's really nice. <laughs> and that's something that I think that writers need is mm -hmm. that support system of of just friends and family who will they they don't even have to have a schedule for it or anything, but what just mm -hmm. people who will just ask how it's going. Mm -hmm. So and that just we, accountability, that's right, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. support, like, you know, with sharing and just, you know, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And if, and if you just need to tell them a crazy idea, just, just to say, <laughs> you call them up and go, uh, listen, so I was thinking if there was a creature, half bird, half fish, uh, but it's a lady, it lives in a cottage on top of a mountain and it's just like mm, is this too crazy where are we going <laughs> you know <laughs> just to bounce that off i don't know and um and, and you know what sometimes that crazy works i actually mm -hmm. got that crazy idea from a random short story i read years ago i think by piers anthony like years ago uh when i was a teenager and it was like this half like the, the bottom half was a bird the top half was a fish but it was an old lady and it spoke and it wore an apron and and it lived in a cottage on top of a mountain and it helped a character and I forget exactly what the story was but I was like I don't know why but it worked <laughs> <laughs> and it's totally nuts at the same time <laughs> um, but but it's it's good because sometimes your your nutso plans end up creating something beautiful and all you need is is your friend to to guide you a little bit or ground you and say forget that one part and the rest of it works, you know, stop mm -hmm. trying to make something bad happen. <laughs> or even just to bring it back and remind you that you were human. Mm. Absolutely. Because I think that's, we were talking about writing. So I feel like we're writers, but we are humans first. Yes. You know, we're beings first. So I think, you know, I think I'm always trying to be mindful of making sure I nurture myself doing the things that I know, those are needs. Like what I shared about the music, I know that there's the creative side, but I'm really aware that when I sing, it's very soothing to me as well as it is to others. Mm -hmm. I know that when I write, it's something that I need, not what I need to do is something that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, like I would say it would be the same as essential as taking supplements, you yeah. know, and as essential, making sure I'm eating the greens and, you know, having a balanced diet and exercising because That's I make important. sure I do those too. You know what I mean? It just, I'm oh, yeah. serious. Oh, no, it's very serious. It, and it's very important. Like people, uh, and, and you and I have had conversations about this in the past where just eating well and listening to your body and what, listening to what your body needs is so important because if you just eat junk food all the time, or, or even if you're technically eating quote unquote healthy food, but you don't feel good, then maybe you're not eating the right healthy food. Y you know, you, you really need to listen to your body and, and having that balanced diet, you are what you eat is a true thing. And you, you once, once you, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I personally can attest to that. Like I've had a lot of health conditions in my time, but 
as soon as I got my diet on track, all of a sudden I'm better. Mm. And, you know, and that's, yeah. <laughs> that's really good. But with writing, she mentioned you are what you eat and mm. with writing is the same thing. Um, I read a lot too. Even if I don't have any new content, I'm always writing poetry. If I'm not working in a novel, like I haven't been for the past since June. Mm -hmm. But the whole time I've been making sure that I'm exploring, I've been making, I've been working on music and I've been um, doing all the other things that makes me feel good, skateboarding, nature, and then having conversations, which is essential. And then, um, yeah, and reading because I feel like, you know, oh, if yeah. you're a writer, if you don't read, you, there's no output. Right. You the know? river has to keep flowing. And that's, exactly. yeah, yeah, the, the are what you eat because you you do, you, your brain is, and, and I'm sure just like anyone, I personally, I was inspired to write novels because of the books that I read and I loved mm -hmm. so much. And, and I just thought, I think I have stories too. And, and that's, and, and the way even now I, I've, I'm actually rereading uh, some books that when I was like 10, 11 years old, they were the fantasy novels, the Dragonlance novels, if, if anybody's mm. interested in that, that's a, it's a wonderful fantasy uh, you, you series that they were the ones that first got me into reading. Like mm. before that, at the age, I was like in between that stage of like children's books and then novels. And then I read my first Dragonlance novel and boom. But I, the first Dragonlance novels that, that I fell in love with reading I've been rereading those and I can see why I fell in love with them as an adult. I, I am, and as a, as a writer now, I can see the vocabulary and the way that these people, and I'm thinking, wow, I was reading these as, a, as like an 11 year old. This is really high vocabulary. This is really, you know what I'm just like, wow, but I got it. And it's because the writers, even if I didn't understand the definition of that particular word, the context was so well implied and, mm -hmm. and it fed me and that, and it's feeding me all over again, you know, cause I decided to reread them and I'm feeling that new inspiration of, of my young self and falling in love all over again with Dragonlance. And I'm probably going to reread like the entire series if I know myself, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah. And, and then, and then, yeah, even it doesn't have to be books. It can be, it can be cooking. It can be walking. It can be just spending time with the right people. Last mm -hmm. night, I, I, you, my, my, uh, my best friend had, had a wonderful little get together at her house just with close friends and and we all you know ate way too much cheese but it was fine <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and we all you know and had some wonderful conversations from that and you have to keep keep yourself satisfied in a in a mental and emotional way because if you, the food is important your your physical food that you're eating the 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 emotional and you know spiritual and all that other you have to find what what enriches you and what feeds you. And then, mm -hmm. and then you're going to get, not only are you going to have a happier life, number one, but <laughs> number two, you're going to find that the writing not only is better, but it comes easier. Exactly. Yeah. It flows. Yeah. yeah. And then I feel like there was something that you said, I was thinking about it. Yeah. I really feel like Oh, oh, what you said about what inspired you. And for me, I feel like what inspired me as well was mm -hmm. Elizabeth Gilbert. You know, she was actually, I read a lot of her books. I read uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. I read uh, one of my favorite books is the book that she did. What is Eat, uh, Eat Praying Love? Oh, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that yeah. was her. Uh, people have watched the movie. I wasn't so interested in the movie. I believe the novel is better. I never saw the movie, but I, I did yeah. read the book. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, all her books. There's a bunch of, and I think I didn't finish. There was another one about uh, man with something about the man and the fish sea or something like that. I didn't finish mm -hmm. reading that one, but, but yeah, so it's just a always to me to be writing the novel. I was actually reading um, because a lot of her novels are actually, you know, are novels. People don't know that because it comes as memoir, but it's a memoir kind of slash novel kind of thing. It's kind of tricky, right. but it's so good. And I think she was what, like one of the inspirations for me as well. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. And that's, and that's just it. And we all find our own inspiration. That's the wonderful thing. And then through you telling me that, like, I've only ever read Eat, Pray, Love by her, but now I want to go back and I want to read her other books 
so that I can see, because we'll, we'll all get something different from it. And that's yeah. the great thing is when we share, we can, we can then garner more inspiration from our mm -hmm. friends and then, and then have conversations about those books and see how the perspectives varied, but in such a positive way that, that we just sort of, you know, we feed off of each other then. It's, so it's a whole, it's a whole positive cycle. It's not a vicious cycle, a positive one, one that, one that, that, you know, you want to create these loops of people talk about breaking the cycle. If you want to break negativity. And I fully agree with that, but you can create these, these happy cycles in your life as well. And those are the kind that you want to just keep spinning and spinning and spinning. And if you can create those, then, then it makes it really easy. <laughs> then, write, then writing and, and everything, uh, at least in my, in my optimistic mind, it'll all fall into place. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you set, if you set yourself for success, but like everything that we just share and putting yourself in a community, I mean, if you want to be a writer, a serious writer and then you want to write books you have to be around other writers that are around other novelists and get feedback from the right people even the wrong people if they're critics you know and they give you one time you'll be able to learn from them also you know don't be so i sure we talked about that oh, too yeah. <laughs> you know so it's just like being open to learn i guess that's another we're talking about reading books but i guess the idea is really learning because you have to learn from other authors be open to different art Poetry, like another, there was a friend of mine on my birthday that bought this book. I'll share with you guys. It's mm -hmm. Illuminate, Illuminated by Rumi. Oh, oh, I, I love Rumi. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there's some pretty cool stuff over here too. It's very spiritual Beautiful. and it's very in-depth. Mm -hmm. I, I was taking my nature walk and a lady told me like, that's kind of pretty deep for the morning. But I said, well, <laughs> that's what I'm drinking this morning. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what I get drunk on. So... <laughs> alcohol is not needed especially <laughs> especially when you're a creative person you can you can get drunk on a lot of a lot of things <laughs> and be just as just as uh untamed i don't i almost don't want to say wild because wild almost has an implication that it's erratic but mm. to be untamed is a different you know a, a liberation of that yeah you don't you inhibitions are gone in in a way that that you can just you can just let it out and and that's that's the most fun. <laughs> I I do I do love that. And I and speaking of the writing groups, I I, I do want to briefly mention that the way we met was through a writing group, uh, the Carnegie Writers Group. I always want to say Guild because it sounds so much cooler to me if it's Carnegie Writers <laughs> Guild, <laughs> but it's not. It's officially group. <laughs> and, um, and they, uh, they, they're online, you can find them on Eventbrite and, and all these other things. Uh, but we actually, uh, we met uh, because, of, because of that group, which is a writer's group, which anyone can join, even if you just have a passing interest in, in learning more about what it is to be a writer, even if you've never written, uh, written three lines together in your life, you can, you can join and just talk and we, we of course do a lot of little fun exercises and, and writing exercises, but we also, we have like what's called the, I think he calls it the writer's corner. I think that's what Frank calls it. And, and we, um, and we collaborate together on like little mini projects and, and it's really fun. Naxana and I had the, had the joy of, um, of meeting on there and uh and then that first time that we were both in the in the meeting together we just we were private messaging it's it's on it's via zoom that we were just private messaging each other the entire time like oh i really loved how you phrased this one thing oh you know i loved i love that too and she and i we just connected we exchanged emails and phone numbers and we were like yeah we're friends now <laughs> this is this is it i found i found a, a partner i, I found a, a really good friend that we just we just felt that kinship right away and i loved that That's true. That's awesome. Yeah. And it wouldn't have happened without a writer's group that we just both were putting ourselves out there and deciding to, to try, uh, try to find that inspiration. And, and sometimes that's, you'll, yeah. Oh, that's, go ahead. that's true. But you know, uh, I just remember that the reason this is amazing that I'm in here on this podcast, because this was last year and this is how I met Hollis because she was right on that verge and of wanting to create the, the discussion got heated in the group because she wanted to create this what she's doing today what came reality her podcast she wanted to create that 
And there was people with many different opinions where were, they were all accepted and some were concerned about different things like, oh my gosh, people, you gotta be careful with this and that. And Hollis did not care. And I stepped in and I said, girl, if you need my support, I'm here for you, what you need. And I understood what she was going for, what she needed that regardless of what anybody was gonna say, what she wanted to create. She was just saying, listen, I have something to offer for authors. I wrote this book and I feel like there's, I feel like she was saying at that time that I couldn't even fully uh, translate the language of it. The language today would be, I just feel like there's more to me to do than this book. Mm -hmm. And I just want to put it out there to share with the world. And right. look, it came reality. Here we are. <laughs> that's right. Well, and that's, and that's it. And I, I forgot about, well, I, I, you reminded me of it because you're right. It did get a little, and, and the heated part came from people saying, well, even if you're positive, there's going to be, you know, the trolls online or whatever. They're going to be people who, who say mean things to you. And I just was like, okay, <laughs> you know, like, like I've lived in the world as an adult for a long time. I've, I've been, um, I, I haven't led an entirely sheltered existence. I've, I've had, you know, I, I've definitely had people be really mean to me in the past <laughs> and I've handled it just fine. Um, I think I'm okay, but that was, that honestly, what I recall was the main pivoting point for people where they were like, oh, whoa, whoa. But if somebody's gonna be negative to you, then maybe you shouldn't do it at all. And I was like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'm sorry, it just doesn't. Cause maybe it is because as this podcast is called, I do what I want. <laughs> this is how I am, obscenely confident. Um, but, I also like if you don't like me, then just don't listen. <laughs> that's, that's that's how I feel. It, it's like I'm not I'm not being negative. I'm being happy. I'm trying to help. And if you do not want my particular version of help, then okay, <laughs> like that's fine with me. I don't expect everyone to get anything out of this. <laughs> like it's it's fine. And and I think I think that's it. But I'm I'm so happy that Oksana was she she was my my one real cheerleader she was the only one going well why not though like why are you scared like you why why let the fear of possible negativity uh bring you down because that's just and and not to devalue their their feelings or anything but that's just not my mindset that's not that you know i i just uh because because no matter what you do and i haven't received any negative feedback yet but of course i only have like 12 listeners probably and 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 most of them are my friends and family so you know and it's and they're all very nice to me uh but it, it's it's that sort of thing where people don't uh, you know don't I, I and actually that brings to another point of don't be afraid that's right yeah don't, don't be, be afraid. afraid because the thing is like if you want to talk about inspiration we this is how we inspire each other because she's so bold and brave too she was bold and brave but like there was so much, I, I see what they were trying to say. I saw yeah. that they were trying to bring all, yeah, when you put stuff out there, but like, I mean, come on. Like my thing was like, she just want to do more as a pod podcast, let her do it. But this is how you got to see, like, I feel like when you have something you want to give, so something more to give and you authentic, we even talked about authenticity too. There's another thing that came up. Yeah. Like, yes, there can be people that might discourage you, but we're not trying to focus on the naysayers. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but no, we yeah. really, she just want to put something out there, let her do it. Like, yes, there can be the pros and cons, but she's still going to do it. And that's what, that's what we want to support, what she's trying to do. We're not trying to support who's going to come to stop it, which, who yeah. hasn't come, who hasn't arrived I've, yet. I've, right. Yeah. And, and it's, and like I said, I, I haven't gotten any negative feedback yet, but it's not like I have a lot of listeners and I'm sure um, hopefully when, you know, hopefully one day when this podcast becomes more popular and I'm a more popular writer and author, I'm sure there'll be people writing me letters saying, I think that you're a terrible person and, and, and you know what? Okay. <laughs> you know, this, and they I, probably, they probably won't because here's the thing, like, this is for writers. This is for somebody that sympathizes with your story and the community and the audience you're building. If they, it's YouTube. So if people don't like it, they're just going to go find another video, find something that's else. Right. It's the truth, you know, that's right. and, I and think that's fine. It's, yeah, it's not that serious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's not that serious. If you're and, and I don't expect I, I am not so prideful to think that my content is amazing. It is always going to help everyone and everyone's going to be entertained or enriched by it. 
probably not. <laughs> but but if I help one or two people, then that's enough for me. And yeah, and even it. if I just make you laugh, yay! You know, that's, <laughs> that's great too. And and that 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 kind of thing is it's in this modern technology world. And obviously, this is a very low budget podcast. In that I just you know I I just have like a little Spreaker subscription, and that's it. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, and a YouTube channel. So so it's I'm. I'm pouring a lot of myself into it, but it's it's also one of those things where where it's okay. I'm just gonna do that as I as the and, and Oksana's heard me say this before in several conversations. But when I was a child, as a little kid, there's a there's an animated Black Beauty movie, and in the movie, Black Beauty's mother tells him, "Do your best and leave the rest. It will all come right someday or night." Mm -hmm. And that's been my motto since I was like five years old. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great, it's a British animated Black Beauty film from like the seventies. I like, it, you can't find it. I, I don't know. I've tried to find it. I, I, I can't. I want to find it. Do you think they I have it still? They, you know what? Online, I'm sure it has to exist somewhere. Um, so what was but, it? Do your best, leave the rest. And what was the last part? Yeah. Do your best, but, and leave the rest. It will all come right someday or night. Mm, and that's poetic. Just, it is very poetic and and it was but it's true and mm -hmm. and that's it like this this podcast the writing everything like it's it's I'm just doing my best and and you know what I'm just gonna that's it I, all I, that's all I can do and yeah. that's all and anyone can do yeah and she's opening her heart because and her giving her time opening her heart because that's who she is as a person, you know. Oh, you're so kind. Be because to be to say yes to something with everything that she already has gone on, I mean, it's not like she, you know. To, to be honest, it would be more. It would be easier to say no because she actually doesn't have the time. But when she already has so many things she's doing, and she's actually willing to put more time into more into something that she loves, and you know, to create and connect with other people. I mean, that's. I don't know. It's just, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's so sweet. And I, yeah, and I, um, yeah, and I, and I love doing it. Honestly, it, it helps. It makes me feel good as well. Mm -hmm. It's for me too. Cause I, yeah, you know, seeing sharing and, and trying to help and, and hopefully helping <laughs> and, and all of that, that all satisfies me and feeds me emotionally and makes, it makes, just makes me happy in life. And, uh, and, and that's, that's it. And if one, if one person comes up to me and, and says they enjoyed something that I did, uh, that, that's a beautiful feeling. So in a way it's kind of selfish, but um, it's, uh, but that's, that's what, that's what makes me happy. And, and that's, that's it. And I find that a lot of people in this world who I perceive as helpers, you know, mm -hmm. are, are, are the ones who, who do just, they just want you to be happy. They want, yeah, that's it. And so they, they put themselves out there. They try to, they try their best. And, and then once you've done your best, then just leave it, you know, and, and the same applies to like, I, I used to, I applied it to everything in life. When I was a kid in school, like I was terrible at math. I've still, it's not my happy place at all. Math is not a happy place for me. But like when I was about to take a math test to sort of psych myself out, I used to say, okay, Hollis, just do your best and leave the rest. And that's it. That's all you could do. And, you know, just like this math stinks, but you have to do it. And, and you, you know, just do your best. And, and if, and whatever, whatever happens, happens. And you know what? I still, I still had a, math was the only subject that I ever got an F in. I, I was almost, I was pretty much a straight A student, except for me. <laughs> I, was, I was straight A's and then there would always be like math, B or C. If, when I got an A in math, it was like a grand occasion <laughs> for me. But it, it was, yeah, that's it. Just, it, I feel that that's applicable to everything, especially also in writing and in life. But yeah, just do your best and then leave it. And, as long and as that's going to be stuck on my mind. I'll probably go to sleep. Just do your best <laughs> Just and do your leave best. the rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. and leave it. And that helps you wow. sleep at night too. I can make, I'm going to probably make a song with that. I mean, something. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that song. Yes. I'd love that. And, and it's true because it even, it's it even very helps catchy. You sleep. It's very catchy and it helps you sleep at night too. Cause you say you're going to hear it in your sleep. Cause it's like, 
if you go to bed every night, you know, it's, we all have responsibility spinning in our brains and all these things that, oh God, maybe I should have done this wrong or this better or uh, whatever. It's like, if you just go to bed and you say, you know what, I did my best today. And then that helps you cleanse your brain of all of that doubt and everything. You know what, I did my best and I can just, I just need to leave all of this because, because me putting forth what I could now, now I, I put out what I needed to put out. The rest of the world will react to it however it's going to react. But I, I did what I, I did everything I could. And, and that's, and then, and now I can go to bed. <laughs> now I can sleep and not, you know, try to, you know, quiet brain for eight hours. Hopefully I wish everyone eight, eight hours of sleep. That would be, that'd be really nice for everybody. But anyway, so <laughs> not everybody gets that. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, my husband's such a light sleeper. I think of him about that. So it's poor guy, the, the dishwasher turns in the night and he, <laughs> and he wakes up the poor man. <laughs> but Oksana, it's been so, I mean, it's always wonderful talking to you yeah. and I appreciate you coming on so much and sharing a little bit of your personal perspective and experience. And I hope that we can do this again. Of um, course. I would, I would love that. And, and of course, I, I can't wait to see what happens and I can't wait to read Abba's journey and, and just, yeah, all of that. I, I'm, I'm really, truly excited by it. Uh, did you want to, uh, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could tell, um, you know, my limited, my 12 listeners, what's your, um, <laughs> what's your, your social medias, uh, you know, the, your YouTube channel and everything. I'll, um, I'll try to remember to, I follow her on YouTube and on uh, Instagram, but I'll, I'll try to put all of the links in the little description box in the bottom. But if you want to tell people where they can find you, if they want to come follow you and, and, uh, and see what you're up to, watch your skateboarding. <laughs> oh, yeah, my skateboard is really not on there, but I did put some creative things in there too, some videos that I did that is good for inspiration as well. But yeah, on Instagram, like you said, you're going to put the links, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Oksana Mauricio on Facebook is Oksana Mauricio. So yeah, so I mean, I'm so glad that you, I'm so honored to be here with you and the laughs and talk about writing. We could do this all day. Yes, we um, could. Yeah. Yeah. And I really, <laughs> I really do enjoy. I'm excited for her book, guys. Don't forget October 20th is coming up. Um, yep. Yeah. And it's, you know, I'm going to purchase that book because she kind of filled me in just a tad little bit. Give me a little <laughs> teaser and I'm, I'm excited to buy it as well. So, you know, if you if you're a writer and you need inspiration in writing a novel or you need just even if you write screenwriting or different things like read, read her novel, read different books, it would really inspire something. So, yeah, oh, thank, thank you so much you. for having me. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah. And and. Uh, I mean, yes, thank you. And thank you for reminding me to plug my book because <laughs> I forget to do that. But, uh, but yeah, and I, and I hope it will, I hope it will inspire. I hope you'll, in, and if nothing else will entertain, um, but it's, it's the Spare the Swallow is available for pre-order on Amazon now. All you have to do is, you know, search Spare the Swallow or my name, Hollis Joe McCullum, and, uh, and it'll pop up for you and you can pre-order it. Uh, it is officially released October 20th, so that's when, if you pre-order, your book will come, <laughs> uh, you know, like that week, whenever, whenever the, the Amazon drivers get to you, um, and, um, and that, that'll be, that'll be that. I, I am going to be releasing a, a an ebook version as well, but that won't be available until uh, probably early November. So if you're an ebook reader, uh, please be patient. <laughs> and, and that's that. And then I've, you know, got the the Queen Witch, which is the sequel to my first book, To Save a World, which also available on Amazon. Is um, I, that's the draft I finished, and it's going into the rounds of painful, painful editing. Uh, and I hope to have that published in April of next year. Uh, I should probably just say spring of next year to give myself a little more wiggle room, but I already said <laughs> April, so now it's accountability time. And um, and then I, yeah, and then I, I, I hope to uh, just keep rolling and keep being a prolific author. And, uh, you know, the, the dream is to, um, 
not need a day job anymore, essentially, as, as I, I actually really love my job. I, I love the people I work with. So, so we'll see. I, I might just want to cut my hours with them. But the, the goal is to be in a place with writing that I, it's not a necess necessity. It is a, it is a thing that I choose. <laughs> that's it. But I'm gonna, so let's, let me see. I gotta, I gotta get my music again. So thank you so much, Oksana. I always feel, I always feel so inspired when I talk to you too. And it makes me feel warm, like happy, happy warmth inside. I feel like I, I know, I know we don't get to hug because this is virtual, but I feel like I get a hug when I oh, talk to you. And I love hug. that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank, I thank you. Thank you for having me. Nice meeting everybody. <laughs> and next time, uh, next podcast will probably be early October I don't know second probably second or third Sunday in October because I'm I'm going on vacation so oh, okay. I will be recording <laughs> oh so you just stop recording I don't know like oh uh... and oh wait and then you YouTube is going to see me stop recording haha <laughs> okay <laughs>